Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Rosemary and in today's video I'll be sharing some refrigerator and freezer organization ideas using products from Amazon, Walmart, and Dollar Tree. In the first half of the video I will be doing ASMR style organization with just the original sound of me organizing and restocking and the occasional product info pop-up. Then, in the second half of the video, I will do the traditional voiceover with explanations, how-tos, real-life applications, and further information on the products used, including cost, where to purchase, and my experience with the products. So let's jump right in with the ASMR portion of the video.
Well, I hope you have enjoyed the ASMR portion of this video. And now we'll be moving on to the voiceover portion where I'll be giving explanations of the organization choices and information and reviews on the products used. As you have already seen, this video has organization ideas useful in any refrigerator, but in this video, I am specifically organizing a counter depth French door fridge with a double drawer freezer. However, I have access to a full size French door, a side by side, and an apartment size fridge with freezer on top. So please let me know in the comments if you would like to see a video specifically on any of these, and if so, which one? Now, if you have watched my past organization videos, you know that one of my all time favorite organization hacks is the burner cover Lazy Susan made from Dollar Tree burner covers and pearl beads. These come together so quickly and easily by taking two same size burner covers, turning them upside down, then pour in a bag of beads and place the other on top. Now for an elegant and sleek ASMR style video, one bag of pearls makes a nice show and smoothly transitions to the next step. However, the truth is to accommodate these heavier bottles of dressings and sauces I'm using for this Lazy Susan, more like one and a half bags of pearls are needed here. Now in the fridge, you can simply spin and see all of your items. And then the only thing better than a Lazy Susan is a double decker Lazy Susan. And I found this rectangular shaped two tier one on Amazon for just $8.99. The Lazy Susan does come with four metal risers. However, I found that these sat way too high for my fridge, so I replaced the metal risers with four wood dowels cut to size. With the shorter risers, I was then able to fit items on the top shelf. I loaded mine up with the heavy jars of preserves and jams and peppers and salsas and other sauces. And at first I found that the Deppel Decker Lazy Susan worked just great, easily gliding around to fill and access the other areas of the tray. It can slide both left and right and turn completely around so you can see the back of the shelf to easily see what's back there. In the fridge, it turns without hitting the side wall or the items on the other side of the shelf. Awesome, right? However, after about a week, it came off the track. I was able to easily fix it and get it back in place. But when I put it back, I didn't load it up with all those heavy jars, opting instead for some lighter weight items like yogurt and not so many jars. And now it works just fine. Next on to one of the best values of this video, and that is this eight piece set from Walmart online. The eight piece set costs just $21.98, which is about $2.60 per piece, and comes with one egg container with cover, one soda can container, and two each of the four, six, and eight inch wide containers. The egg container has 14 slots, which is good since you always seem to have a couple hanging on when you get that new carton, and it comes with a cover, which in turn creates a surface for more storage. In addition, one of the four inch wide containers fits perfectly underneath and creates a double decker storage unit, perfect for breakfast meats. The two tier piece can then slide onto a shelf and there is still a little space left over to slide more items on top. Now, yogurt does make a great option here for an ASMR style video, but in real life, yogurt would not be very practical since that will require removing each yogurt to get to the eggs. So a much better fit here would be leftovers or tomorrow's lunch or another one piece item that is much easier to move. Next up, we have the canned container. And if you're like me and don't typically have canned beverages, this container can still be used to hold other items like bag cheese or corral, meal prep containers, leftovers, etc. In addition, these containers work great in the pantry, in closets, and even drawers for small items or to keep file folded items neat and tidy. I have also used these in living spaces to store items like video games and hobby supplies. So it's not a waste to get in the set, even if you don't typically have canned beverages. As for the eight inch wide containers, these are great to corral larger bagged items and packages like lunch meats. They're also great for bottled beverages and can also be used all over the house to organize and keep things tidy in the pantry, closets, cabinets, and drawers. The next container is the second four inch wide container, which is the same as what I use as the base to the two tier egg holder. For this one, I chose to store more specialty type cheeses like fresh mozzarella, Parmesan, and brie, but these center containers are also perfect for juice boxes, go-go squeezes type containers, and fruit cups and the like. And then in the last bin, I'll be using one of the six inch containers, and these are great for packaged sliced and shredded cheeses. 
And as you can see, we really like cheese. Wow, maybe a little too much. Anywho, what I really want to explain here is that depending on the length of the bin and the depth of your refrigerator, more often than not, you will have space behind your organizing bins to store surplus items or maybe items you don't use as much but still need to refrigerate. For example, maybe you bought some butter on sale or purchased in a big club pack at Sam's or Costco. You can store it behind your bin, but just don't forget you have the supply back there, then place your bin back in front. I don't know about you, but I never seem to have enough room in my crisper drawers. So I found these stackable bins on Amazon that come in a pack of eight for $18.99, which work out to be about $2.36 a bin. Now, in my attempt to make these bins as much like a crisper as possible, I purchased some of these Produce Saver Ethylene Gas Absorbers from Amazon and then attached them to the sides of each bin using my favorite double-sided tape, also from Amazon. If you watch my channel, you know I absolutely love this stuff. And much like the old lady from the Frank's Red Hot Sauce commercial, I put that mm on everything. Next, in an attempt to better control the humidity inside the bins, I decided to try these Blue Apple Veggie Zip Bags that have special vented bags and hydro liners, which you wrap the produce in. Now, depending on the produce you're storing, you use the liners either wet or dry, and Blue Apple provides a complete listing on their website for every fruit and vegetable imaginable and how to properly store to maximize longevity. Since carrots require a wet liner, I went ahead and dug the liner into the water and wringed it out. Blue Apple suggests storing vegetables unwashed, so I went ahead and wrapped the carrots straight from the bag in the damp cloth, then placed it in the specially vented bags. Now, a couple of things here. First, the hydro liners are made of a very thin, very much like paper towel material. Now, from looking at them, I can't tell if, in fact, they are made of some magical high-tech substance. But to me, they basically look and feel more and more importantly tear like paper towel. As for the bags, they basically look like very thin, oversized Ziploc bags with little slats cut in them. From the looks of things so far, I wasn't exactly inspired with confidence, but was willing to give them a try, especially since all of that bag crunching, water wringing, and paper folding makes for some great ASMR videos. But in practical application, I really was looking for a solution for my crisper drawer overflow and hoped that by using the bags, liners, and ethylene gas absorbers, I could potentially replicate conditions in the crisper drawers. And I'll let you know how I fared momentarily, but let's first finish up with the organization part. So I decided that these tricked out bins were going to house my carrots, celery, and scallions, leaving my veggie drawer for greens. To label the bins, I decided to use some Dollar Tree chalkboard clips and just my regular P-Touch labeler to create both name and date for the items that were packaged. From there, the mini boards can be clipped right onto the bin, then the bins stacked, which is what I love about these bins. However, there is something weird about these in that certain ones in the set are actually the bottom and certain ones are the tops. However, there's no indication to which one is which. So if you get these, make sure you do a few combination to see which work which way. Then from there, the stack bins can be placed on a shelf, taking advantage of that vertical space above, plus the fact that the bins do have openings along the sides helps the airflow so critical to enhancing the longevity of your produce. But now the answer to the question many of you are probably asking, and that is, do these bags really work? And the answer is a definite yes, but with a couple of caveats. First, I only did one straight up a scientific method type test with a control group, etc., taking heads of lettuce from the same Sam's Club pack and wrapping two in the bags with a liner and leaving two in the original packaging, then placing both in the crisper drawer. As you can see, after more than two weeks, the ones in the veggie bags with liners fared much better than the ones left in the original packaging. These all came from the exact same multi-pack bag from Sam's Club, purchased at the same time, with all of them being stored in the crisper drawer. So I can say with 100% certainty that the bags were great for the lettuce, keeping them fresh and edible, while the store packaging turned brown and kind of rotted out. Now, in addition to my first caveat that I didn't do a full-blown test with a control group, etc., on the other produce types, my second caveat is that just in the casual observation of those other types, 
And I may be totally wrong here, but it does seem as though some of the other ones didn't fare so well. So more on that later. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, I really love these Dollar Tree Lazy Susans. So when it came to organizing my pickles, olives, and fermented items, I decided to make another. Once again, to appeal to the flow and rhythm of the ASMR style video, I used only one bag of pearls in the video. However, to accommodate the weight of these heavier items, one and a half bags of pearls is more appropriate. And then, ah, so much better to be able to access and see all of your choices, especially on a lower shelf like this, where it's darker and harder to see what's in the back on the shelf. Now, since there is such a constant variation of items needing to be stored in the fridge, when organizing a fridge, I think it's important to keep an open space designated for those variation items like meal prep, leftovers, items you're defrosting, takeout containers, or oversized items like cakes. Having said that, that doesn't mean we can't make more dedicated use of the vertical space above, so I decided to create a little herb crisper on the underside of the shelf above. To make, I decided to use one of the veggie bags and affix it with strips of my favorite double-sided tape. Now, I could have used something more substantial here, like those resealable, reusable Ziploc bags or a plastic pocket folder from the Dollar Tree, but since I wanted to maintain the moisture, humidity, and breathability to help best preserve the herbs, I wanted the veggie bag option. And I have to say, the results have been great. Not only do I now have a designated out of the way spot for items like my parsley and cilantro, but I find that they stay fresh way longer in my little makeshift herb nook. Now, since I didn't go for an official compare and contrast test with the herbs, I can only estimate, but I would say I was still clipping off of those herbs weeks after they normally go wilted and go bad. As for the space below, the plastic top to a long ago used disposable foil pan makes a great tray to hold fresh meats and items to defrost, and even larger items like a whole chicken fit nicely in the space. Okay, so now on to the actual crisper drawers, and I start here by fixing one of those ethylene gas absorbers from Amazon on the side with a double-sided tape. But honestly, I'm not sure if it had any effect. As previously mentioned, I'll be using the drawer to store my greens, and in our house we have pretty much veggie standbys. Lettuce, spinach, and broccoli are constants, and then we usually rotate out a special guest star veggie like a Brussels sprout or a zucchini, or like here, some asparagus. And I gave all the veggies the bag and liner treatment. And now we know the lettuce did great. Unfortunately, I can't say the same for the spinach and the broccoli. Now again, I can't officially say since I did not do a control group, but just anecdotally, it did seem that the broccoli and spinach did markedly worse by removing them from their original bags. Now again, since I use these veggies all the time and have historically kept them in their original bags, I do have a gauge on this, but again, since there's no control group, it's too hard to say, and these may have just been a bad batch or something. On the other hand, I have to say that the asparagus did phenomenal, and you know how time flies, and I actually didn't end up using those for almost an entire month, and with the exception of the base of the stems, which had a little bit had to be cut off, which has to be done anyway, they were completely fresh and firm. Outstanding. As for the other crisper drawer, that was dedicated to fruits. And I did learn in my research for this video that you have to separate your fruits and vegetables since the ethylene gas emission is much higher for fruits, especially apples. And airflow is also important. So I removed the fruits from their bags and placed them in these wire baskets from Dollar Tree. To absorb the excess ethylene gas, I decided to try one of these blue apple absorbers, which are basically the same idea as the packet that I taped to the side in the other drawer. Now again, since I didn't do an actual day-by-day -day observation with a control group and all that stuff, it was really not fair for me to say definitively one way or another about the efficacy of either method. Having said that, in my casual observance, it did seem that both methods did add some life extension, nothing extraordinary like the asparagus or the lettuce, but maybe a few days longer than normal. Now, as for the baskets, they did fit nicely into the drawer, but there is some unused space vertically. So to take advantage of that, I took one of these Dollar Tree pencil boxes and added some surplus cheese sticks from a club size bag. Then I placed the box under the first basket, and this does make use of the unused space and keeps excess stowed away and not cluttering up the shelf space. There's also some available space on the side of the drawer, and so I thought, okay, how about some strawberries and grapes in the bags? 
Unfortunately, I have to say this was the worst application of these bags, as the strawberries and grapes didn't really do well at all. Now, having said that, those strawberries were awful, actually. I got those through a Walmart pickup, which is, usually does a pretty good job choosing good veggies and fruits, but maybe they didn't have a lot to choose from or something, because they were awful. And um, as for the grapes, well, they may have just been a victim of so much produce lately. I don't know about you, but I'm finding that so much fresh produce is actually much older when you buy it than it was in the past. And so things have gotten a much shorter shelf life. So even magical bags with magical liners can't really do much about that. Now, if you look at them, our crisper drawers have one more storage trick up their sleeves, and that is their flat fronts. The perfect place to attach these reusable Ziploc bags with strips of my all-time favorite double-sided tape, told you, on everything. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this refrigerator is a counter depth fridge. So there's only about an inch or two of space between the drawer front and the shelf on the fridge door when the door is shut. However, on your typical or standard fridge, which is actually like a full size fridge, um, that space is about three or four inches and can accommodate much bigger pockets and even bins. But in this case, we can slide in some individual packs of cut veggies or fruit and other items like maybe a Go-Gurt, like go packs or cheese sticks would also work. And then here is the full look at the main body of the organized fridge. Now onto the doors. And as you can see on the empty fridge, the placement of the shelves leaves a lot of wasted storage space in the areas made to accommodate taller items. But what in the world would be that tall that would need 17 inches of headspace? So enter the Walmart drawer organizer basket. Dollar Tree sells a similar three pack, but I prefer the Walmart one as it's sturdier and much better quality and costs less. You can use command removable hooks to attach to the fridge drawer, but I was actually getting mixed results using the adhesive on the strip. To fix that, I used a saw pieces of my cure-all double-sided tape, and it worked like a charm. So now I think it's safe to say, not only am I like the Frank's Red Hot Lady, but also like the dad with his Windex in my Big Fat Great Wedding, and instead I go put some double-sided tape on it. I thought my new door baskets would be the perfect location to store leftover cut fruits and veggies. We always have these wrapped in plastic and placed on a shelf, and then more often than not, these get pushed to the back and or forgotten. Placing them in these colorful holders and storing them up front on the door makes them more likely to be seen and therefore used. The holders themselves do a good job of keeping the cut items fresh. In the shelf above, I like to keep my cream cheese and butter items corralled. Then in the shelf below, there's ample room for shorter items under the basket and taller items in front. Below the shelf, I've installed another basket to house the other holders, but this would also be great for all kinds of smaller items like cheese sticks, go and fruit and veggie packs, dressing packs, and the like. Then, even with the basket installed, there's ample room for large size beverages like half gallon cartons and full gallon jugs. As for the other door, I like to try and keep like items together. So on the top shelf, I like to keep all the Asian sauces like soy, oyster, fish, and sesame. Now, because of the way my counter comes and where I had to place the camera, I kind of like had to throw everything in here from the side and kind of like from behind. So not very ASMR, but the best I can do under the circumstances. On the next shelf down, I put all of my oversized basic condiments like mayo, mustard, relish, and ketchup. Then on the bottom shelf, some more of my specialized mustards go in behind with the bottles of orange juice and lemonade in front. And now here's a look at the completed refrigerator, including the doors. Now moving on to the freezer section. This fridge has one large pull-out drawer with two interior drawers. In the top drawer, I placed two of the six inch stackable bins from that eight piece set from Amazon. And these six inch bins work great to organize a good majority of frozen food boxes, although many frozen food boxes will require an eight inch bin. The second drawer is deeper, so I like to line the bottom with stocked surplus items. In this case, non-bread, which does make the best pizzas, and tortilla. 
On top of those, I placed two of the locker bins from Dollar Tree, which can be easily removed when I want to get to my non or the tortilla stash. Into those bins, I can place frozen meats that I picked up, as you can see on markdowns, and then a supply of frozen veggies on the other side. The placement of these two bins creates a deep middle section, which is perfect for oversized bags. Now, if you're wondering where in the world I get so many of the delicious jams, sauces, and pickled items, well, those are actually made by friends of mine, and I will link their websites in the description if you'd like to check out all their goodies. And remember, if you'd like to see some of those other refrigerator types organized, please let me know in the comments. Also, please let me know if you like the ASMR style videos. And if you'd like to check out some more organization videos, be sure to click on one of these videos here. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.